Telecommunication Standardization Assembly 2024, taking place here in New Delhi, India, for the first time in its 150-year history. We also welcome all guests, delegates, and experts who join us for the eighth edition of the India Mobile Congress being held concurrently. May I request the Honorable Minister of Communications and Development of Northeastern Region, Sri Jyotiraditya Sindhya, to please welcome all our delegates, participants, and guests. Honorable Prime Minister, and India's Path Pradarshak, Adarniya Shri Narendra Modi Ji, Secretary General of the ITU, Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, esteemed leaders, innovators, and policymakers. It is with a sense of great pride and joy that I warmly welcome all of you to this momentous occasion where we declare open not one, but two landmark events for our telecom sector. The World Telecom Standardization Assembly convened by the International Telecommunication Union and the Indian Mobile Congress. It is our singular honor to have between us the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, to grace us with his presence. <clears throat> Last year, in the month of September, Owing to the Honorable Prime Minister's dynamic leadership, India took up the baton of the G20 summit for the first time in her history of 75 years. And in the same vein of first, we are now honored to host the illustrious WTSA Assembly, which, mind you, is also the first time it's being hosted in all of Asia, in Bharat Mata, where we will celebrate the power of technology, particularly telecommunications, and the underlying global frameworks and standards. We have amongst us 3,200 delegates from over 160 countries, the highest ever for any WTSA assembly in its history. We are confident that this will, along with the Indian Mobile Congress in its eighth edition, which is South Asia's largest digital technology gathering, this will serve as a breeding ground for innovation, but also showcase India's impending but inevitable emergence as a global hub for telecommunications across the world. Pehle zamane mein mobile or telecom ko keval dur bhash ka sadhan samjha jata tha. Aur Pradhan Mantri ji ke dur drishya netit ke aadhar par aaj ye एक एक व्यक्ति को विश्व के साथ और भारत में एक एक व्यक्ति को दूसरों के दिलों के साथ जोड़ने का साधन बन चुका है भारत में टेलीकॉम का महत्व केवल टीवी इंटरनेट और फोन के साथ जोड़ने का नहीं है लेकिन भारत में अगर एक परिवार को मोबाइल मिल जाए इंटरनेट की सेवा मिल जाए तो वो बैंकिंग से जुड़ गया है वेलफेयर स्कीम्स के साथ जुड़ गया है आवश्यक सूचना के साथ जुड़ गया है और सबसे महत्वपूर्ण संपूर्ण विश्व के साथ जुड़ चुका है 
some of the most remarkable examples of the power of telecom, paving the way for universal empowerment, is the DBT, the Direct Benefit Transfer Scheme, which in a day transfers more than 10 million direct cash transfers on a daily basis into the bank accounts of people. Abhi hali mein kuch din purv, humare Pradhan Mantri ji ne 93 million kisano ke khato mein Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi ke aadhar par 20,000 crore rupay, matlab 2.5 billion dollars, seedhe unke khate mein pahunchane ka karya kiya hai, jo shayad vishwa ke kisi desh mein nahi hota, Pradhan Mantri ji ke netit ke aadhar par bharat mein sambhav ho paaya hai. It's a fundamental change in the approach towards technology development. And India has ushered in this fundamental change due to the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, who has always put people at the heart of progress. His motto, Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, or Sabka Prayas, combined with his second motto, one earth, one family, and one future. It is the combination of these two mottos that leads India under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership into one of the leading sectors and leading countries on the Comity of Nations. It is this motto of connected the unconnected that informed policy making is part of India's fabric today. When it comes to the area of telecom, we are steadfastly bridging the gap between the digital haves and the have-nots through the Bharat Net program, which is the world's largest rural broadband connectivity program at over $10 billion in the last three years alone, laying 700,000 kilometers of fiber. Our success has staggering numbers associated with it. Mobile connections in India have risen from 904 million to over 1.16 billion today. Broadband connectivity in India 10 years ago was restricted to only 60 million users. Today, it's a staggering 924 million users. OFC fiber in India was only 11 million root kilometers. Today, it is 41 million root kilometers. And these staggering numbers of growth are accompanied by a digital payment system, 4G stack, the UPI interface, jin avishkaron ke aadhar par Bharat ki aur vishwa ki digital economy ke pillars banne ja rahe. The credit for this goes single-minded pursuit of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji for building world-class infrastructure. It is our resolve today in India that we shall bring policies up to speed with the changing times and the challenges that confront us. The recent changes to the Telecommunications Act 2023 is a case in point. It has been work drawing light upon hitherto unaddressed areas, such as the high potential sector of satellite communications, addressing the challenges of the digital era, the most important being cybersecurity. The telecom sector, much like other growth critical sectors in India, is aggressive, is ambitious, and is outlook in our journey from our Amrit Kal to our Shatabdi Kal is to lead the world. Today, by mid of next year, we will have rolled out 4G across the length and breadth of India. 100% saturation will be completed. We've had the fastest 5G rollout in India. 450,000 BTSs, 98% of districts covered, 90% of all villages covered in a span of only 21 months. And this attitude put forward by the Prime Minister of not just embracing, but bracing ourselves to becoming the first mover in the 6G technology 
It is noteworthy that the Indian Mobile Congress and the International 6G Symposium demonstrates both local and global advancements in 6G and also design principles that will shape the future of telecom. With our Bharat 6G Alliance, where we hope to contribute at least 10% of patents to 6G standardization, it is our belief and our commitment that India followed the world in 4G. We marched with the world in 5G, but we shall lead the world in 6G. I'm grateful today to all the participants for taking time out and partaking in this journey. And we certainly hope the next 10 days will align our visions and define our paths towards telecom, but more importantly, for a more connected world. And with this, Bharat, that is the second largest telecom market in the world, and in the telecom hub, you are all the best of the world. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, Mr. Sindhya, sir. May I now invite the chairman of the Reliance Geo Infocom Limited, Shri Akash Ambani, to please address the conference. Most respected Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Minister of Communication Shri Jyotir Adindya Sindhya ji, Honorable Minister of State for Communications, Dr. Chandrasekhar P. Masani ji. Chairman of DOT, Dr. Neeraj Mittal ji, my esteemed senior colleagues from the industry, and distinguished delegates, namaste. My heartiest congratulations to our visionary and incredibly dynamic leader, Sri Narendra Modi ji, for gracing this edition of the India Mobile Congress in his historic third term as Prime Minister. Adhanya Pradhan Mantri ji, under your visionary guidance, the India Mobile Congress has grown in stature and achieved global standing, making it a significant platform for digital innovation and collaboration. Because of your encouragement to the industry and innovation, India has been digitally transformed by perhaps the biggest digital revolution in history. In new India, in Modiji's India, there's no more business as usual, rather, there's unusual synergy between government and industry to deliver world-class services to satisfy the needs and expectations of 1.45 billion Indians. As a representative of Young India, I thank you for your incredible connection with the youth and for inspiring us to pursue impossible-looking goals. As we say in Hindi, Modi hai to mumkin hai. For our international audiences, Modi makes everything possible. Friends, the world is in awe of a nation that crawling at 2G speed only eight years ago is now galloping down the 5G highway. I would like to assure Prime Minister that India will have an even better record in 6G. From a nation that ranked a lowly 155th in mobile broadband adoption, we have risen to become the world's largest data market. From a nation where the number of unicorns could be counted on a single hand, fingers of a single hand, we have now emerged as the third largest unicorn hub in the world. UPI has become the world's number one digital payment system. Today, India stands as the only large country in the world that has one of the lowest mobile data prices and yet one of the fastest internet speeds. India spoke out but our data consumption of over 30 GB is one of the highest in the world. But that is only half the picture. The other half tells you India's story of digital transformation is an example of inclusivity. Modiji has ensured that innovation leads to more inclusion. He has democratized digital technology and used it as a tool to take the benefits to the last mile, leaving no one behind. Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modiji, आपके दूरदर्शी नेतृत्व ने एक चमत्कार कर दिया। भारत में अब सिर्फ सबका साथ, सबका विकास ही नहीं, बल्कि सबका डिजिटल साथ और सबका डिजिटल विकास भी हो रहा है। 
India's digital revolution has spread to the remotest corners of our nation. Over 530 million unbanked Indians have been brought into the financial system through Jandhan accounts. To put things into perspective, 530 million is more than the combined population of the US, UK, France, and Canada. What is even more heartening is that over 300 million of these account holders are women. I feel both proud and humbled that GEO has played a significant part in this remarkable transformation. Distinguished participants, I take the opportunity of the India Mobile Congress to present two suggestions for the kind consideration of our Prime Minister. My first suggestion, artificial intelligence is the most revolutionary tool of transformation invented by the human mind. It will disruptively transform every aspect of our life, every facet of our society, every sector of our economy, and bring in an era of unimaginable abundance and efficiency. With AI, India has the potential to completely transform the manufacturing centers, including SMEs, so that India becomes a new age factory and new age service center for the world. The agriculture sector, so that our farmers can become prosperous by growing more with less water. The health sector, so that quality healthcare for all can become a reality. The education sector, so that every Indian student can have the best of learning opportunities. AI is absolutely critical for realizing our dream of a Vixit Bharat by 2047. Therefore, India, under your leadership, should urgently embrace AI with a holistic strategy driven by maximum Atman Hirbhar efforts. At GEO, we have begun our efforts to bring benefits of AI to every Indian, just as we did with mobile broadband. We are committed to democratizing AI, offering powerful AI models and services to everyone in India at affordable prices. Towards this end, we are laying the groundwork for a national AI infrastructure. My second suggestion, the scale and speed of multilingual data generation in India which will drive the AI revolution, will grow exponentially. We request the government to expedite the updating of the 2020 draft of the data center policy that Indian data should remain in India data centers. Therefore, Indian companies ready to set up AI and machine learning data centers should get all necessary incentives, including incentives for power consumption. Indian mobile companies, along with the thriving ecosystem, are in a position to offer solutions to the rest of the world, including developed nations. India needs an accelerated talent generation on a scale that is necessary to make India a global AI leader. Some of the existing jobs will evolve, and many more exciting opportunities for employment and entrepreneurship are going to be created in a rapid way, just like during the adoption of computers and the internet. In conclusion, it is our promise not only that India will lead the charge in mobile innovation, but we will fully embrace the power of AI to create a connected, intelligent future that is truly transformative for every Indian. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you, Mr. Ambani. May I now invite the chairman of Bharti Enterprises, Sri Sunil Bharti Mittal, to please address the congregation. Adhaniya Pradhan Mantri, Lok Priya Modi Ji, Honorable Minister of Communications, Mr. Sindhya, Honorable Minister of State, Dr. Chandrasekhar, other senior government dignitaries, Secretary General ITU, and a long-standing friend of mine for over 20 years, Doreen, and many of my industry colleagues who are here today. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a great pleasure today to be once again standing in front of you during IMC 24. And then it coincides with a very important ITU meet here in India makes it even more special. This event showcases India's development in telecom infrastructure 
and its digital technologies. In this very hall, not too long ago, the leaders of the world's top 20 countries assembled and witnessed India's rise on the global standing in both political terms and economic terms. But what the world has sat up and noticed and has been awestruck is the digital revolution in this country. I have been a long traveler on this journey. Since 1983, I've been a part of India's telecom story, but I can tell you that the real story began when Prime Minister Modi ji took charge in 2014. He knew, he knew the power of technology. He used it in Gujarat for the benefit of the citizens of Gujarat and the society. He realized that if India has to achieve its place on the top table of the world, technology needs to be put to use. And one of the main pillars of his vision was Digital India. That fired up all the entrepreneurs who are connected with telecom and digital services. That ushered in the 4G revolution in this country within two years of his assumption of office. That brought in smartphones in the hands of not just rich urban Indians, but in the poorer Indians in the most rural and hinterlands of India. That, as our minister rightly said, ushered in a revolution of digital broadband connectivity that connected them to wonderful services that both private sector and indeed the government and public sector had to offer. That spawned a number of startups in this country, turning many of them into unicorns and bringing in billions of dollars from the world. That stage was set to be used for Prime Minister's second term in 20, 2019, when he came in and recognized that India is highly dependent on imports of telecom equipment and digital equipment. India at that time was importing nearly $500 billion worth of equipment from all over the world, including from our neighboring country. He asked Indian entrepreneurs and world corporations to come and set up manufacturing bases in India. And I mentioned this before here, India had lost the manufacturing race in the previous 20, 30 years to China and other parts of the world. That call to action has resulted in today India becoming a major manufacturing hub where the animal spirits of Indian entrepreneurs and the global corporations are unleashed by the support of a massive productivity-linked incentive program, the PLI, as well as ushering in the most complicated, complex process, which no other country has really initiated in a manner that India has, of trusted sources and trusted products. Today, every element in this country that is coming goes through the detailed eye of National Security Council on Telecom. Every source, every product, every element of India's network that connects our nation passes through that rigorous test of trusted networks and trusted products. This is seminal development which other countries need to follow very quickly. Before the second term expired, he recognized that India may be left behind and become a follower once again in 5G. He asked Department of Telecom and the Indian operators to gear up and launch 5G at the fastest pace possible. And I'm glad to report, and I'm sure most of you in this room are connected to a 5G network, India not only launched the fastest 5G networks in the country, not just in urban areas, but including all the villages and rural areas, and more network rollouts are happening as we speak every day, every month. And within a matter of next 12 to 18 months, again, each and every part of the country will be connected through a very powerful 5G network. That was, to my mind, the seminal contribution of the second term of Honorable Prime Minister Modi. But as we know, he never rests on his laurels. You achieve something, he will give you a bigger task to do. India has now dialed up its ambitions to be a semiconductor destination as well. A number of initiatives by the government of India have been taken to now start the process of manufacturing semiconductors in this country. Alliances globally are being built. India and US have recently signed a critical technology partnership 
India has gone ahead and signed partnerships with France, with the UK, with Japan, and many other leading countries, including Taiwan, to come and set up shops here in semiconductor. The other big part of the third term is going to be opening up of space industry for the private sector. That, to my mind, is again one of the huge developments that India is seeing. Friends who are here from the world, from mobile industry, recognize that it's almost impossible for terrestrial services to cover every square inch of any country, or our oceans, or our skies. In the past, just like 2G, we had the VSATs, which were connecting on a very slow 2G type of dial of speeds some of the critical areas. With the launch of LEO networks, the low Earth orbit networks, now we have the possibility of connecting 4G speeds and massive capacities in the hands of those who have been left behind. India has 95% of population covered, but they live in 75% of the places. There are 5% of people who are in those remote areas, in mountains, in forests, in deep remote rural areas, where USO is trying to catch up and provide the services. And I want to assure the Prime Minister that with the launch of SATCOM services in this country, anybody, anywhere in the country, however remote or in difficult conditions they may be, will be able to connect on a fast speed network to the internet using voice, data, videos, whatever is required, as is done on a 4G, 5G network. Dorian is here. ITU assigns the spectrum and orbital slots globally, and that job will keep on happening. However, there is now a debate going on across the world, and there is where I would like to draw the attention of the Honorable Prime Minister, that intertemporal choices will have to be made as to how satellite, which is moving fast in technologies, need to coexist with terrestrial networks. My message is very simple. Telecom companies around the globe have done a seminal work in connecting the world. They will take the satellite services into the remotest parts of their nations through the USO program and directly through themselves. And those satellite companies who have ambitions to come into urban areas serving elite retail customers just need to take the telecom licenses like everybody else. Be bound with the same conditions they need to buy the spectrum as the telecom companies buy. They need to pay the license fee as the telecom companies do, and also secure the networks like telecom companies do. This is a simple solution which can be done on a global scale, and India can again show the way in, in this particular regard. Finally, Honorable Prime Minister, I'd like to assure you that Airtel has been at the forefront of India's telecom revolution. It has stood the test of time. It has seen the journey right from the 2G and dial-up modems to where we are in India today, creating a digital revolution that the world is seeing. And Bharti Airtel will be a very responsible company. While building these fanciful networks, it will be responsible towards its customers, it will be responsible towards its stakeholders, and I'm glad that Airtel took the initiative of launching India's first anti-spam network, blocking in billions of calls coming from scamsters, Billions of messages coming from fraudsters to secure the lives of our customers. We are now working with the industry to ensure, and with the Department of Telecom, that our people, when they're using these networks and enjoying all those services, are safe and secure. Honorable Prime Minister, Bharti Airtel will play its role in your vision of building a very powerful India. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Mehta. May I now invite the chairman of the Aditya Birla Group, Sri Kumar Mangalam Birla, to please say a few words. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Minister of Communication Sri Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, Honorable Minister of State for Communication, Dr. Chandra Shekhar, Chairman DCC and Secretary DOT, Dr. Neeraj Mittal, my colleagues from the industry, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here as we mark the inauguration of the eighth 
India Mobile Congress and reflect on the remarkable progress made by the telecom sector in delivering connectivity and the benefits of digital transformation to Indian citizens. At the heart of this progress, as we know, lies the steadfast, steadfast progress support of our government. Our government has consistently recognized the importance of digital connectivity and has introduced several reforms over the years to drive us towards an even more connected, empowered, and inclusive digital nation. Pradhan Mantri ji, is digital parivartan ki neev aapki vision ne aadharit ki hai. What has been remarkable in this journey is the government's continued thrust on expanding digital infrastructure and accelerating digital adoption for people and businesses equally. As a result, the digital transformation is now moving beyond just the large businesses to our MSMEs, enabling them to break traditional barriers and enter new markets. A few years ago, our Prime Minister had articulated that MSME means maximum support to micro, small, and medium enterprises. We at VI2 are committed to providing maximum support by promoting digital transformation to India's small businesses. With a focus on technologies like 5G, IoT, AI, and cloud services, the VI Business Ready for Next program is helping MSMEs assess their digital readiness, identify areas for improvement, and adopt necessary digital solutions to become future-ready corporations. Since its launch in June 2022, over 1.6 lakh MSMEs have used the VI platform. And through the power of our telecom platforms, I believe that we can create a thriving digital ecosystem that empowers our MSMEs to drive India's economic growth. Robust connectivity is also transforming how we live and how we work, as demonstrated by solutions showcased by VI at IMC this year. High-speed networks are making telemedicine possible, for example, in remote locations, allowing medical professionals to diagnose and treat patients virtually and bridging the gap between urban and rural healthcare. Just last year, India achieved the remarkable feat of 10 crore teleconsultations, and I believe that this is a matter of great pride for every Indian. Real-time high-speed connectivity will also enable safety and improved efficiencies in critical industries for industry for sectors like mining, construction, and industrial automation. Unimaginable some years ago, it is remarkable how far we have come in connecting people, machines, and devices with such efficiency. Today, we are building a future where virtual and augmented reality immersive experiences will become increasingly integrated into our daily lives. One of the most pressing issues being addressed by the government, regulator, and industry in the past year is spam control and fraud product protection. As networks have grown, we have the potential risk to the public, especially from phishing schemes, fraudulent calls, and spam messages. These undermine public confidence in communication systems and also put people's personal and financial security at risk. In collaboration with the government and regulatory bodies, VI is making significant strides in combating this menace. Vodafone Idea is committed to bringing new and innovative solutions that will fundamentally address spam and fraud at the very core. Public awareness campaigns, too, are helping to educate users about how to identify and avoid spams. This year has also been an important one for Vodafone Idea, as the company has taken critical steps in its own transformation journey. The company's 18,000 crore FPO 
marking the largest of its kind in India, was met with overwhelming enthusiasm. It was oversubscribed seven times overall and an astonishing 19 times amongst institutional investors. The surge in demand culminated in a total bid for approximately 93,500 crores across various investor categories. This response was an emphatic endorsement of the potential of the Indian telecom sector. To me, it signaled the faith that investors have in our Prime Minister's bold vision of a digital India. The fundraise has enabled the company to kickstart again its CapEx cycle. Vodafone Idea has already announced the next phase of CapEx detail worth $3.6 billion with three global partners, Nokia, Ericsson, and Samsung. These are all key steps that place VI on a more secure footing and ensure that the company remains dynamic and competitive. With the continued support of the government, I'm confident that we will do our part to realize the Prime Minister's digital India destiny. I am a firm believer in the transformative power of India's telecom sector, and I see it as a bridge to a more connected, empowered, and prosperous India. Thank you once again to the government, to our partners, and the entire telecom community for making the past year truly an exceptional one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Birla. May I now invite the Secretary General ITU, Ms. Doreen Bogdan-Martin, to please address the WTSA 2024. Namaste, India. Namaste, Modi ji. Namaste, Minister Sindhya, Minister Chandra Sekhar, Minister Mittal, Chairman Abani, Chairman Mittal, Chairman Birla, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to stand with you here today, with you, Honorable Prime Minister, to open the 2024 World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly and India Mobile Congress in a joint ceremony. I think this is a powerful symbol of the deep ties between the ITU and India. Ties that were at the heart of our meaningful conversation last year when I had the great pleasure to inaugurate together with the Honorable Prime Minister, the ITU Area Office and Innovation Center. Since then, it's been an incredible year for digital. As digital innovation in AI and other emerging technologies continues unabated, world leaders came together just a few weeks ago in New York and adopted the Pact of the Future and its global digital compact. They sent a powerful message to the world that our future is digital and we can and we must write it together. On that historic occasion, the Honorable Prime Minister, you stressed the need for global digital governance and you made India's ambition very clear to lead by example and to share its digital public infrastructure with the entire world. DPI was a big priority during India's G20 presidency, where ITU had the pleasure to be a knowledge partner. The world has a lot to learn from what India has accomplished with the Unified Payments Interface, Adhar, and other building blocks of today's digital economy. Standards are the engine that powers these platforms to operate at scale, 
giving every Indian with a mobile device access to life-changing services. And that's why we're all here today. Because we know that standards build trust, trust nurtures inclusion, and inclusion can unlock the full potential of digital and emerging technologies for everyone, everywhere, including the third of humanity that's still offline. Honorable Prime Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this global gathering, the first of its kind in Asia, calls for bold collective action. In the next 10 days, we can, and I firmly believe we can, we can strengthen the role of international standards as the bedrock of global digital governance. One of our most urgent tasks is ensuring that AI is developed responsibly and as a force for good. As we work to drive progress in this decade and beyond, let's ensure that standards help to level the playing field for innovation. Let's align technological progress with digital inclusion. And ladies and gentlemen, together, let's write a digital future that is more connected, that's secure, that's responsible, and that is sustainable for all. Thank you, and Danya Watt, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bogdan Martin. May I now request the Honorable Prime Minister of India to please launch the World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly 2024 by unveiling a digital plaque. Please be seated, sir. From the land where the ethos of Atithi Devo Bhava, the caste is called, guides our spirit of global unity. India proudly welcomes you to the heart of its capital, New Delhi, for the ITU World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly 2024. Since its inception in 1865, the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, has been at the forefront of global telecommunications, driving innovation and fostering worldwide connectivity. India, proudly joining in 1869, has been a vital partner in this journey. Last year marked a significant milestone in this journey. भारत में टेक्नोलॉजी सिर्फ मोड ऑफ पावर नहीं है बल्कि मिशन टू एम्पावर है विद द आईटीयू एरिया ऑफिस ओपनिंग इन न्यू दिल्ली as a specialized agency of the United Nations, ITU continues to be a driving force in the digital era, bringing together 194 member countries and over 900 sectors and academia members. Every four years, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly, WTSA, sets global telecom standards and shapes the future of telecommunications worldwide. And for the first time in the history of Asia-Pacific region, this prestigious assembly comes to India as the future of telecommunications is here. The telecom journey towards Vikasit Bharat has seen a dramatic transformation driven by the government of India. With over 1.2 billion subscribers and 900 million internet users, the country now has the world's second largest telecom network. Bharat Net Initiative has ensured nationwide digital inclusion. India's 5G rollout is among the fastest globally, with more than 100 5G labs enabling innovations in sectors like healthcare, digital payments, agriculture, and education. Median mobile download speeds skyrocketed while prices dropped. As the third largest startup ecosystem, India is enabling ecosystem for innovations in emerging tech like 6G, AI, quantum, fintech, and cyber security.
through the initiatives of the government, India is bridging the digital divide. At WTSA 2024, we welcome you to participate in a global dialogue that transcends borders, embodying India's philosophy of Vishwabandhu, a universal fraternity. In this land where tradition harmonizes with cutting-edge technology, India stands ready to work with the world to achieve the sustainable development goals. Together, let's innovate, collaborate and build a future of safe, secure, universal and meaningful global connectivity. May I also request the Honourable Prime Minister to launch the 8th India Mobile Congress by clicking the remote. India, a nation where technology is the pulse of progress, a nation that inspires innovation and where every stride forward is guided by the vision of a Vixit Bharat. Innovation ka ek culture Vixit Bharat ke nirmaan ke liye nahi. May I now request the Honourable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, to please address the congregation. Mantri Mandal ke mere sahiyogi. Jyotiraditya Sindhya ji, Chandrasekhar ji, ITU ki Secretary General, Vibhind Deshwan ke Mantri gaan, Bharat ke Bhind Bhind Rajyo se hai huye sab Mantri gaan, Industry Leaders, Telecom Experts, Startups ki Dunia ke मेरे प्रिय नौजवान देश दुनिया से आए अन्य महानुभाव देवी और सज्जनों इंडिया मोबाइल कांग्रेस में 
देश और दुनिया के आप सभी साथियों का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन मैं इंटरनेशनल टेलीकॉम यूनियन आईटीयू के साथियों का भी विशेष स्वागत करता हूं आपने डब्ल्यू के लिए पहली बार भारत चुना है मैं आपका आभारी भी हूं और आपकी सराहना भी करता हूं साथियों आज भारत टेलीकॉम और उससे जुड़ी टेक्नोलॉजी के मामले में दुनिया के सबसे हैपनिंग देशों में से एक है भारत जहां 120 करोड़ यानी 1200 मिलियन मोबाइल फोन यूजर्स हैं भारत जहां 95 करोड़ यानी 950 मिलियन इंटरनेट यूजर्स हैं भारत जहां दुनिया का 40 परसेंट से अधिक का रियल टाइम डिजिटल ट्रांजेक्शन होता है भारत जिसने डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी को लास्ट माइल डिलीवरी का इफेक्टिव टूल बनाकर दिखाया है वहां ग्लोबल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन के स्टैंडर्ड और फ्यूचर पर चर्चा ग्लोबल गुड का भी माध्यम बनेगी मैं आप सभी को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं फ्रेंड्स डब्ल्यू और इंडिया मोबाइल कांग्रेस का एक साथ होना भी बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है डब्ल्यू का लक्ष्य ग्लोबल स्टैंडर्ड पर काम करना है वहीं इंडिया मोबाइल कांग्रेस की बड़ी भूमिका सर्विसेज के साथ जुड़ी हुई है इसलिए आज का ये आयोजन स्टैंडर्ड्स और सर्विसेज दोनों को एक ही मंच पर ले आया है आज भारत क्वालिटी सर्विस पर बहुत ज्यादा फोकस कर रहा है हम अपने स्टैंडर्ड्स पर भी विशेष बल दे रहे हैं ऐसे में डब्ल्यू का अनुभव भारत को एक नई ऊर्जा देने वाला होगा साथियों डब्ल्यू टी ऐसे पूरी दुनिया को कंसेंसस के जरिए एम्पावर करने की बात करता है इंडिया मोबाइल कांग्रेस पूरी दुनिया को कनेक्टिविटी के जरिए सशक्त करने की बात करती है यानी इस इवेंट में कंसेंसस और कनेक्टिविटी भी एक साथ जुड़ी है आप जानते हैं कि आज की कॉन्फ्लिक्ट से भरी दुनिया के लिए इन दोनों का होना कितना जरूरी है भारत हजारों वर्षों से वसुधैव कुटुम्बकम के हमें अमर संदेश को जीता रहा है हमें जी ट्वेंटी का नेतृत्व करने का अवसर मिला तब भी हमने वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर का ही संदेश दिया भारत दुनिया को कॉन्फ्लिक्ट से बाहर निकालकर कनेक्ट करने में ही जुटा है प्राचीन सिल्क रूट से लेकर आज के टेक्नोलॉजी रूट तक भारत का हमेशा एक ही मिशन रहा है दुनिया को कनेक्ट करना और प्रगति के नए रास्ते खोलना ऐसे में डब्ल्यू और आई की ये साझेदारी भी एक प्रेरक और शानदार मैसेज है 
जब लोकल और ग्लोबल का मेल होता है तब न केवल एक देश बल्कि पूरी दुनिया को इसका लाभ मिलता है और यही हमारा लक्ष्य है फ्रेंड 21वीं सदी में भारत की मोबाइल और टेलीकॉम यात्रा पूरे विश्व के लिए स्टडी का विषय है दुनिया में मोबाइल और टेलीकॉम को एक सुविधा के रूप में देखा गया लेकिन भारत का मॉडल कुछ अलग रहा है भारत में हमने टेलीकॉम को सिर्फ कनेक्टिविटी का नहीं बल्कि इक्विटी और अपॉर्चुनिटी का माध्यम बनाया ये माध्यम आज गांव और शहर अमीर और गरीब के बीच भी दूरी को मिटाने में मदद कर रहा है मुझे याद है जब मैं 10 साल पहले डिजिटल इंडिया का विजन देश के सामने रख रहा था तो मैंने कहा था कि हम टुकड़ों में नहीं बल्कि होलिस्टिक अप्रोच के साथ चलना होगा तब हमने डिजिटल इंडिया के चार पिलर्स की पहचान की थी पहला डिवाइस की कीमत कम होनी चाहिए दूसरा डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी देश के कोने कोने तक पहुंचे तीसरा डेटा सबकी पहुंच में होना है और चौथा डिजिटल फर्स्ट ही हमारा लक्ष्य होना चाहिए हमने इन चार पिलर्स पर एक साथ काम करना शुरू किया और हमें इसके नतीजे भी मिले फ्रेंड्स हमारे यहां फोन तब तक सस्ते नहीं हो सकते थे जब तक हम भारत में ही उनको मैन्युफैक्चरर न करते 2014 में भारत में सिर्फ टू मोबाइल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट थी आज 200 से ज्यादा है पहले हम ज्यादातर फोन बाहर से इंपोर्ट करते थे आज हम पहले से छह गुना ज्यादा मोबाइल फोन भारत में बना रहे हैं हमारी पहचान एक मोबाइल एक्सपोर्टर देश की है और हम इतने पर ही नहीं रुके हैं अब हम चिप से लेकर फिनिश प्रोडक्ट तक दुनिया को एक कंप्लीट मेड इन इंडिया फोन देने में जुटे हैं हम भारत में सेमीकंडक्टर इकोसिस्टम पर भी बहुत बड़ा इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं फ्रेंड्स कनेक्टिविटी के पिलर पर काम करते हुए भारत में हमने ये सुनिश्चित किया कि हर घर कनेक्ट हो हमने देश के कोने कोने में मोबाइल टावर्स का एक सशक्त नेटवर्क बनाया जो हमारे ट्राइबल एरियाज हैं हिली एरियाज हैं बॉर्डर एरियाज हैं वहां बहुत कम समय में ही हजारों मोबाइल टावर लगाए गए हमने रेलवे स्टेशन और दूसरे पब्लिक प्लेसेस पर वाईफाई की सुविधा दी हमने अपने अंडमान निकोबार और लक्षद्वीप जैसे आइलैंड को अंडर सी केबल्स के माध्यम से कनेक्ट किया भारत ने सिर्फ दस साल में जितना ऑप्टिकल फाइबर बिछाया है उसकी लंबाई धरती और चंद्रमा के बीच की दूरी से भी आठ गुना है मैं 
मैं भारत की स्पीड का आपको एक उदाहरण देता हूं दो साल पहले मोबाइल कांग्रेस में ही हमने 5G लॉन्च किया था आज भारत का करीब करीब हर जिला 5G सर्विस से जुड़ चुका है आज भारत दुनिया का दूसरा बड़ा 5G मार्केट बन चुका है और अब हम 6G टेक्नोलॉजी पर भी तेजी से काम कर रहे हैं साथियों भारत ने टेलीकॉम सेक्टर में जो रिफॉर्म्स किए जो इनोवेशन किए वो अकल्पनीय है अभूतपूर्व है इससे डेटा की कीमत बहुत कम हुई आज भारत में इंटरनेट डेटा की कीमत लगभग 12 सेंट प्रति जीबी है जबकि दुनिया के कितने ही देशों में एक जीबी डेटा इससे 10 गुना से 20 गुना ज्यादा महंगा है हम भारतीय आज हर महीने औसतन करीब 30 जीबी डेटा कंज्यूम करते हैं साथियों इन सारे प्रयासों को हमारे चौथे पिलर यानी डिजिटल फर्स्ट की भावना से नई स्केल पर पहुंचाया है भारत ने डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी को डेमोक्रेटाइज किया भारत ने डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म बनाए और इस प्लेटफॉर्म पर हुए इनोवेशन ने लाखों नए अवसर पैदा किए जनधन आधार और मोबाइल की जेम ट्रिनिटी कितने ही नए इनोवेशन का आधार बनी है यूनिफाइड पेमेंट इंटरफेस यूपीआई ने कितनी ही नई कंपनियों को नए मौके दिए हैं अब आजकल ओ की भी ऐसी ही चर्चा हो रही है ओ से भी डिजिटल कॉमर्स में नई क्रांति आने वाली है हमने कोरोना के दौरान भी देखा है कि कैसे हमारे डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स ने हर काम आसान किया है जरूरतमंदों तक तो पैसा भेजना हो कोरोना से निपटने में जुटे कर्मचारियों तक रियल टाइम गाइडलाइंस भेजनी हो वैक्सीनेशन का प्रोसेस स्ट्रीमलाइन करना हो वैक्सीन का डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट देना हो भारत में सब कुछ बहुत स्मिथ स्मूथली हुआ आज भारत के पास एक ऐसा डिजिटल बुके है जो दुनिया में वेलफेयर स्कीम्स को एक नई ऊंचाई दे सकता है इसलिए जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी के दौरान भी भारत ने डिजिटल पब्लिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर बल दिया और आज मैं फिर दोहराऊंगा भारत को डीपीआई से संबंधित अपना अनुभव और जानकारी सभी देशों के साथ शेयर करने में खुशी होगी साथियों यहां डब्ल्यू में नेटवर्क ऑफ विमेन इनिशिएटिव पर भी चर्चा होनी है ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट विषय है भारत विमेन लेड डेवलपमेंट को लेकर बहुत ही गंभीरता से काम कर रहा है जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी के दौरान भी हमने अपने इस कमिटमेंट को आगे बढ़ाया टेक्नोलॉजी सेक्टर को इंक्लूसिव बनाना 
टेक्नोलॉजी प्लेटफॉर्म्स है महिलाओं को एम्पावर करना भारत इस लक्ष्य को लेकर चल रहा है आपने देखा है कि हमारे स्पेस मिशंस में हमारी वीमेन साइंटिस्ट का कितना बड़ा रोल है हमारे स्टार्टअप में वीमेन को फाउंडर की संख्या लगातार बढ़ रही है आज भारत की स्टेम एजुकेशन में 40 परसेंट से अधिक हिस्सेदारी हमारी बेटियों की है भारत आज टेक्नोलॉजी लीडरशिप में महिलाओं के लिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा अवसर बना रही है आपने सरकार के नमो ड्रोन दीदी कार्यक्रम के बारे में जरूर सुना होगा ये खेती में ड्रोन क्रांति को बढ़ावा देने वाला कार्यक्रम है इस अभियान को भारत के गांवों की महिलाएं लीड कर रही है डिजिटल बैंकिंग डिजिटल पेमेंट्स को घर घर पहुंचाने के लिए भी हमने बैंक सखी प्रोग्राम चलाया यानी महिलाओं ने डिजिटल अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम को भी लीड किया हमारे प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर मैटर्निटी और चाइल्ड केयर में भी आशा और आंगनवाड़ी वर्कर्स का बहुत बड़ा रोल है आज ये वर्कर्स टैब्स और एप्स के माध्यम से इस पूरे काम को ट्रैक करती हैं महिलाओं के लिए हम महिला ई हार्ट कार्यक्रम भी चला रहे हैं ये विमेन एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप के लिए एक ऑनलाइन मार्केटिंग प्लेटफॉर्म है यानी आज गांव गांव में भारत की महिलाएं ऐसी टेक्नोलॉजी पर काम कर रही है जो अकल्पनीय है आने वाले समय में हम इसका दायरा और बढ़ाने वाले हैं मैं उस भारत की कल्पना कर रहा हूं जहां हर बेटी एक टेक लीडर हो फ्रेंड्स भारत ने अपनी जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी के दौरान एक गंभीर विषय दुनिया के सामने रखा था इस विषय को मैं डब्ल्यू जैसे ग्लोबल प्लेटफॉर्म के सामने भी रखना चाह चाहता हूं ये विषय है डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी के ग्लोबल फ्रेमवर्क का ग्लोबल गाइडलाइंस का अब समय आ गया है कि ग्लोबल इंस्टीट्यूशंस को ग्लोबल गवर्नेंस के लिए इसके महत्व को स्वीकार ना होगा टेक्नोलॉजी के लिए वैश्विक स्तर पर डूज एंड डोंट्स बनाने होंगे आज जितने भी डिजिटल टूल्स और एप्लीकेशंस हैं वो बंधनों से परे हैं किसी भी देश की बाउंड्री से परे हैं इसलिए कोई भी देश अकेले साइबर थ्रेड से अपने नागरिकों की रक्षा नहीं कर सकता इसके लिए हमें मिलकर काम करना होगा ग्लोबल संस्थाओं को आगे बढ़कर जिम्मेदारी उठानी होगी हम जानते हैं हमारा अनुभव जैसे हमने एविएशन सेक्टर के लिए एक ग्लोबल रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन का फ्रेमवर्क बनाया है वैसे ही फ्रेमवर्क की जरूरत डिजिटल वर्ल्ड को भी है और इसके लिए डब्ल्यू को और अधिक सक्रियता से काम करना होगा मैं डब्ल्यू से जुड़े हर सदस्य को से कहूंगा कि वो इस दिशा में सोचे कि कैसे टेलीकम्युनिकेशन को सभी के लिए सेफ बनाया जाए इस इंटरकनेक्टेड दुनिया में सिक्योरिटी किसी भी तरह से आफ्टर थॉट नहीं हो सकती भारत के डेटा प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट और नेशनल साइबर सिक्योरिटी स्ट्रेटजी एक सेफ डिजिटल इकोसिस्टम बनाने के प्रति 
हमारे कमिटमेंट को दिखाते हैं मैं इस असेंबली के सदस्यों से कहूंगा आप ऐसे स्टैंडर्ड्स बनाएं जो इंक्लूसिव हो सिक्योर हो और भविष्य के हर चैलेंज के लिए एडेप्टेबल हो आप एथिकल एआई और डेटा प्राइवेसी के ऐसे ग्लोबल स्टैंडर्ड्स बनाएं जो अलग अलग देशों की डायवर्सिटी का भी सम्मान करें साथियों ये बहुत जरूरी है कि आज के इस टेक्नोलॉजी कल रिवॉल्यूशन में हम टेक्नोलॉजी को ह्यूमन सेंट्रिक डायमेंशन देने का निरंतर प्रयास करें हम पर ये जिम्मेदारी है कि रिवॉल्यूशन रिस्पॉन्सिबल और सस्टेनेबल हो आज हम जो भी स्टैंडर्ड सेट करेंगे उससे हमारे भविष्य की दिशा तय हो इसलिए सिक्योरिटी डिग्निटी और इक्विटी के प्रिंसिपल्स हमारी चर्चा के केंद्र में होने चाहिए हमारा मकसद होना चाहिए कि कोई देश कोई रीजन और कोई कम्युनिटी इस डिजिटल युग में पीछे न रह जाए हमें सुनिश्चित करना होगा हमारा भविष्य टेक्निकली स्ट्रांग भी हो और एथिकली साउंड भी हो हमारे भविष्य में इनोवेशन भी हो इंक्लूजन भी हो साथियों डब्ल्यू की सफलता के लिए मेरी शुभकामनाएं आपके साथ है मेरा सपोर्ट आपके साथ है आप सबको मेरी बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Thank you Mr Prime Minister sir we are indebted to you for gracing and inaugurating the WTSA and IMC and we'll cherish the time you have spent with us ladies and gentlemen we have reached the end of the inaugural ceremony kindly remain in your places until the honorable prime minister has left the hall